you very much, Terry, for that very kind introduction. I'm sure you can all hear me, yes? Everybody here, we're still here. And we're going to be using another bit of technology and uh, to go about uh, these kind of things. As Derek said, I'm uh, from the Super Generation, and we deliver education, motivation, and inspiration seminars for students. And I'll tell you a bit about that later. But the first thing I want to do uh, today is I want to show you a short video. And we've got to just set the scene for something I want to talk about tonight. So if you all just sit back and enjoy. And In a pillow fight, 14-year-old Ben Underwood can deliver a dead-on shot. When a video game is going, his fingers fly. On his skates, he's fearless. For most teenagers, it's nothing remarkable. But Ben Underwood is blind. Totally blind. Hear the clicks? That's how he finds his way around. To walk down the street with Ben is to be amazed at what he can see with his ears. Well, there's the fire hydrant on the side and the car on the side. Like, is that not the trash can or that? Hold on, let me see. That's a trash can. <laughs> yeah, a trash can. Ben was just two years old when cancer claimed his eyes. Both were surgically removed. And he woke up from that surgery and then said, Mom, I can't see anymore, I can't see anymore. And I said, you can't use your eyes, but you got your nose and your ears and your mouth. From that day on, Ben has used his hearing, his touch, his sense of smell to conquer a world of darkness. It's sometimes hard to believe how good Ben is. Just to watch the way he deftly steps around a fallen trash can. I don't know how you do that. Somehow, Ben has mastered echolocation. It's the same way dolphins get around, bouncing sound waves to figure out where they are. On a trip to SeaWorld a few weeks ago, Ben found that he and the dolphins shared an amazing talent. You know, I think the real story here is not, is not his talents, but, but his attitude. And I think the attitude is what it's really about. We have to give our kids confidence. We give them pride. Empower him with who he is and be proud of who you are no matter what. Out, and what's amazing for me in that story is the belief that Ben had. Because we can see the amazing talents that he has, and it's magnificent to see how a child with a eyes can suddenly manage to see. But it was the beliefs he held in himself, and the beliefs that he could do anything, that allowed him to find that ability. But the most amazing thing for me about that story is not Ben, and that is truly amazing what he did. But the most amazing thing for me about that story was his mother. Because it was his mother who instilled that belief in him. And it was his mother that gave him the idea that he could do anything and instilled it in that he didn't have limitations and that it wasn't a disability because he didn't believe he had one. And there's a lesson in that for us all tonight because it's what beliefs we hold, whether they're limiting or not, whether they're empowering or disempowering, that really can set um, uh, our limits in life. So what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is what I call your potential power. And your potential power is that potential is within us all and particularly that potential is within the students that you interact with. And what I want to talk to you about is how we get out get that out and how can we can get that belief system into it. And I know we all know maybe not children that are blind, but maybe they're blind to the possibilities that we're in, blind to the opportunities that they have, blind to the beliefs, the power that's within them. And I suppose I would have asked the question, what if? What if we can bring that out? What if we can inspire them to really go on and do something special in their lives? Because if we have inspired, motivated, and focused students, most importantly, how different would our classrooms be? How different would your life be? If we have children and students that are focused on a higher purpose, higher meaning for their life, how different would it be? So what I want to do tonight is just give you an example, a very short example, because I'm not going to the time, I want to do, do this quite quickly, of just what we do in one of our programs. So it's just kind of a, give you an experience, give you a taste of what we do, maybe hear some of the stories that we tell to students, maybe listen to some of the, see some of the images that we show, that hopefully can assist them. But so the first thing I should do is supposed to, explain a little bit about why I'm here, I suppose, the reason why I'm standing here, I suppose. And I call this the power of beliefs. Um, and I call it the power of beliefs because it was when I changed my beliefs that it made a significant difference in my life. When I understand, understood that I had living beliefs, and I found ways of how I could change them, it made a significant difference to what I did. And to give you an academic example for myself, and um, I actually uh, underachieved quite dramatically as a student. I got a very poor leaving cert, and I was quite uh, upset and depressed with it. Uh, in the sense that I didn't get any of the courses I want. On a list of 10 degrees I had on the CAO or CES uh, um, um, form, I didn't get any. 
So I ended up doing a course I didn't want, and I ended up failing out that after a couple of years in college as well. So I didn't really get on, I didn't have a, a, a good start to, to, to my academic life. But what I did find was I was very lucky, I was very lucky to have some great features in my life in many different stages of my life, and they made a serious impact on me. And what they helped me do was to change my belief system. And I changed my belief system about how I could achieve, particularly in the exams, all I went on to further to do my degree and, and eventually do my masters. And it was simple things like that that, that changed my academic life. But more importantly, it wasn't just the academic achievements that I had. What changed in me was my belief system about my whole of my life. And really what I did, as Jerry said, I was an engineer at one stage, but I made a choice a few years ago to completely change that. Some people thought I was mad. But I made that choice so I could go and pursue what I was passionate about. To do what I really, what was really uh, resonated with me. And I've done that, and I've followed my passions quite dramatically over the last few years. Um, and I, I followed my passion for travel, uh, and I've traveled much more. And I can say that I mean, my beliefs have changed in the sense that that has literally brought me to the top of the mountains. And I have stood on top of the mountains. And I don't tell you that to say, oh, look, I've done this. It's not about that. But it's about, it's to give you an example of, because these things I didn't think were possible. When I was a student, when I was 15 or 16 years old, I didn't think I could do any of these things. And I always thought that these were just external things, just impossible for me to get. Because I had the, the, plenty of evidence to support that I wasn't going to go through those things. But when I changed my belief system, that changed for me. And it was, I developed a real passion for education when I started to get good results, as you can imagine. Um, but it's my passion for education, it's both a passion for what I was taught that happened to me every day, and it's that passion that I want to give to some of the students or some of the, uh, the, the young people that I know. So very quickly, let's get started. Um, and I know you'd all be very familiar with the concept of teaching, um, but I want to explain it from my perspective or how we see it. What I'm going to talk about here is the mind. And we're talking about here about unlocking potential. 